What up, Ring Crew Army? And welcome to a brand new episode of the Squared Circle Podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows. And on this episode of the Squared Circle Podcast, we will still be going over New Japan Pro Wrestling, the Road to Castle Attack series. Today, I cover match two, which was a eight-man tag on one side, we have Bullet Club. The other side, we have Chaos. For Bullet Club, it was Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa, Jado, and Chase taking on Yano, Yoshihashi, Goto, and Sho. And then I will be going over the main event on that same card, which featured a tag team match. We have, again, Bullet Club versus Chaos. On one side is Jay White teaming up with Evil to take on Ishii and Okada who represents chaos, but that main event will be in another podcast episode. I do not want to overwhelm you guys with so much wrestling. As always, I look for feedbacks and comments and thoughts about what you guys think about New Japan Pro Wrestling so far, what you think about the Road to Castle Attack series, and just how well I give you all the information and hope that my podcast episodes bring you some type of value into your everyday listening lives. Aside from that... There are some housekeeping notes that you guys need to know. If you guys have not been following New Japan Pro Wrestling as much, well, Hiromu has now suffered a injury in his left chest muscle. And that's very unfortunate. I was looking forward to talking about Hiromu versus El Fantasmo as an honorable mention on this podcast when they would have faced each other during castle attack night two but Hiromu is now going to be out of action for six to 12 months and i wish Hiromu a speedy recovery so we can get him back into the ring and have some more amazing matches and some really amazing backstage comments I will also try to be getting done a article for previewing Castle Attack Night 1 and Night 2 and everything you need to know about these matches. It might end up as a podcast as well, just because I like talking about wrestling and talking is the quickest way other than writing, but I need to flex my writing skills as much as I can. Either way, look out for a preview for Castle Attack Night 1 and 2 and then Go wish Hiromu a speedy recovery on social media. And these podcast episodes going forward will be audio and video based. So if you're not following me over on the YouTube side, we're currently at 60 subscribers. I need to get to 100 subscribers. So I need 40 more in order to get that special URL. So I could just tell you head over to youtube.com forward slash square circle podcast And you can listen to all of my wrestling reviews there. And then if you're also a fan of Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and just want to listen to audio formats, head over to any of those. Search for Square Circle Podcasts or just go directly to anchor.fm forward slash Square Circle Podcasts to listen to this episode more and definitely the backlogs. So let's jump right into this eight man tag. Again, we have Bullet Club facing Chaos, and all of these men are in singles action for night one of Castle Attack. And it's going to be a very interesting matchup and story progression after those singles matches take place. And then for night two, we go right back into tag team action. But currently in this match, Bullet Club starts things off by attacking Chaos. Tama and Loa are attacking Goto and Yoshihashi. Those will be their opponents come for night one of Castle Attack. We have double Irish whips from Tama and Loa, but Yoshi reverses, so it's Goto shoulder tackling into Tama. Yoshi and Goto do double kicks and then send Loa into the ropes, double shoulder blocks, and then the assisted hip toss from Goto to Yoshi onto Loa. Tama tries to go after Yoshi or Goto. However, Goto stops him, kicks him in the gut, and maintains wrist control, bringing Tama down to the mat. Yoshi then leaps over Goto with a single stomp onto Tama's midsection, then double knees to Tama from both men, and Tama rolls out of the ring. All members of Chaos do their patented windmill forearms to Jado and then Chase. Sho comes in with kicks to Loa, but Loa picks up show for a powerbomb. Jado throws show into the barricade. 
Chase throws Yano into the barricade as well and chokes him a little bit with the strap. This coming Castle of Attack night one, it will be Yano versus Chase Owens in a strap match. And you guys can definitely vote for the stipulation over on the NJPW Global official Twitter account. I just think that it should be a regular strap match. Yano, no one has time for your stipulation of taking off the turnbuckles instead of just tapping them to win the match. Jado manages to hit show with a Kendall stick. Lower throws Goto back first into the apron. Tama took out Yoshi, walks over to give Yano a punch. Right now, there is a little bit of chaos, no pun intended, in this part of the match where everyone is hitting everyone and the referee is trying to regain some control. And the referee does. So we have Loa tags in Jado while he has show in the gory special. Jado comes in and chops show's chest. And then finally, Loa lets him go and goes outside of the ring. Old school rope burn to show's face by Jado. Jado with the headlock and then a shoulder tackle by Jado. Once show tries to get some type of momentum, but again, that doesn't happen. Jado comes in with that shoulder block. Jado then tags in Tama. Tama comes in with a back body drop and then a jumping elbow to show. Tama then tags in Chase. Chase throws Sho into the corner, leaping forearm, and then a clothesline. Chase then goes for a cover on Sho, only for Sho to kick out at two. Then there are strikes between Sho and Chase. Sho manages to get a spear on Chase, and this allows Sho to get the tag in on Yano. Yano comes in, automatically takes off the turnbuckle. Both Chase and Yano argue about who to put down the turnbuckle and the strap respectively so both men are holding these weapons and they're not supposed to be using it in the match so they decide to on the count of three to toss their weapons however when it does get to the count of three yano does toss away the turnbuckle however chase still has the strap in his hand and tried to hit yano with it however the referee takes the strap away from him and this allows Yano to hit Chase in the back of the head which is not a very good idea to do that to anyone let alone Chase in this match so both men are countering their attacks until Chase is able to do a jumping knee to Yano and during some more exchanges Yano manages to pull Chase down by the hair and now we get Yoshi and Tama tagged into this match Yoshi comes in with a flurry of elbows and then does a hurricanrana to Tamatanga. There is a chop, a short arm clothesline, and Yoshi tries for a neck breaker, but Tama smartly elbows Yoshi in the back of the head. Tama and Loa do their combination attack on Yoshi, which is punch to the gut, then an open palm strike, and then the gun stun. They do the same thing to Goto. Chase comes in with a big boot to Yano that knocks Yano off the apron. Bullet Club has now singled out Yoshihashi in the middle of the ring. We have Tama with his punch to the gut. Jado comes in with a kick. Loa comes in with a back body drop. And Chase comes in with a shining wizard. Jado goes for the cover and Yoshi kicks out a two. Jado then transitions Yoshi into the cross face. She gets to the rope causing a rope break. Jado has Yoshi in the ropes, does a kick, and was about to do a move until Yano comes in and stops that. Chase then comes into the ring and kicks Yano to the outside. Sho comes in with a jumping kick. Tama comes in with the tongue twist on Sho. Loa and Tama double team against Goto. Goto breaks through their clothesline attempt and Goto gives a forearm to Tama. Loa tries to go for a kick. However, Goto sidesteps and lariats Loa. Goto then gets Tama in a fireman's carry, but Tama struggles to break free and tries to attack Goto. However, Goto sidesteps and that allows Tama to run into Yoshihashi's super kick. And this allows Goto to pick up Tama once again so he can do the assisted Yushigoroshi net breaker. This means that Yoshihashi will once again kick Tamatanga in the head and therefore Goto will do an elevated shoulder neck breaker to Tama applying more hurt to one half of G.O.D. Jado then comes in and gets heel kicked by Yoshi. Goto then gets Jado ready for an assisted Russian leg sweep where 
Yoshihashi is going to come in with a running neck breaker and that will allow the momentum for Goto to fall back for this Russian leg sweep on Jado. Jado then kicks out of the pin attempt by Yoshihashi and once that happens, Yoshi switches over to the butterfly lock submission on Jado. This causes Jado to then tap to Yoshihashi, giving the victory over to Chaos for this match. This now gives Yoshihashi a three lead momentum victory, televised momentum victory heading into castle attack. So the other two times he got the victory over Jado. I'm including this victory in this match. And then at the new beginning, he got a victory over Tungalova with a simple cradle pin. And then I'm not sure if during the New Japan Pro Wrestling shows at Iwate and Yamagata, if they count, those weren't televised wrestling shows. So they're not going to be factored into my analysis at this point in the podcast. However, Yoshihashi manages to get submission victories over Jado. And at one point, Tamatanga just played it off like Jado has been in the game for 30 years. So it's understandable. Eventually, Jado's time will come when he decides to retire. So that's no big deal. Yoshihashi can keep those victories over Jado. However, no one in Bullet Club is really talking about that Yoshi has gotten the cradle pin over Tungaloa. I know it probably frustrates him and probably talking about it wouldn't be the best strategy especially when he's going to be facing Yoshihashi at Castle Attack Night 1 in a singles match. I really hope that Tangaloa has done his studying and is able to overcome and not be surprised by a cradle pin and lose the match. Not saying that he will lose the match, but I'm just saying that I hope he studied enough so that way he could counter it. And for him to get the victory over Yoshihashi when comes Castle Attack Night 1. This momentum and this build means everything to Yoshihashi and Goto. They have been teaming for a good while and they are great as tag team wrestlers. They have the same chemistry and the same thought patterns. They do a lot of combination moves and they're very great together in the ring the same way as G.O.D. But take the tag team element out and you're left with singles competitors. At one point or another, all four of these men were singles competitors. Before Tango Loa came over to New Japan Pro Wrestling, he was in NXT as Camacho. He was there with Hernandez and he had a little bit of work within WWE. Then he just came over to New Japan Pro Wrestling and aligned himself with Tama Tonga and aligned himself with Bullet Club. And there goes that history. Tama was once a singles competitor as well. However, him and Goto have some history together in New Japan Pro Wrestling. They actually teamed up as a tag team. But obviously, that was very short-lived. It did help Tama in the long run to get a feel for New Japan Pro Wrestling and call New Japan Pro Wrestling his home. And now he's Bullet Club and he's teaming with his brother. So it all worked out in the end. Tama's backstage comments, he still downplays both Yoshi and Goto. And after doing some slight research... I can see why. Yoshi is a phenomenal wrestler. So is Goto. Goto has a lot more accomplishments than Yoshi. Together as a tag team, Yoshi and Goto are really good against G.O.D. However, to wrestle smartly and safe does not bring victories when you're in the ring with G.O.D. And sometimes that is what Goto and Yoshi do. They play it safe. I understand that they're the baby faces and G.O.D. are the heels, but... If you're going to ever go into war with any Bullet Club members, you better bring your dirty side of professional wrestling, meaning use a referee to cheat. Try using some distractions. Try taking G.O.D. off their game because G.O.D. is great at manipulating the rules to their advantage and manipulating the referee to get advantages on their opponents. But if you as the opponent is not doing the same input as your competitors, then you're never going to break through that glass ceiling that's been holding you down to take 
the tag team championships off of one of the best tag teams in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So come Castle Attack Night 1, it's going to be Yoshihashi versus... Tungaloa. Yoshi already has a victory over Tungaloa with that cradle pin from the new beginning. I hope that Loa study that and will not get tripped up again and potentially lose the match. Loa has a lot more talent and a lot more craftiness as a singles competitor better than Yoshihashi. So I'm giving my prediction win to Tungaloa in that match. Now, for the other match on that same card of Castle Attack Night 1, we will have Tamatanga taking on Goto. And this is going to be an interesting matchup because they have history. And maybe Goto can bust out something new in his moveset to get Tama off his game, even though Tama is pretty crafty himself and will use everything that he can to his advantage. So who's going to win? Tama. I'm not about to bet against Bullet Club and that'll be wrong to bet against Bullet Club, even if Bullet Club has been coming out on top, depending on who they have in the match with them and then versus not coming out on top. But either way, they're still winners at heart because we're still talking about Bullet Club and then we're also talking about the guys that they're fighting, but we're mainly talking about Bullet Club more. If both Bullet Club members, Loa and Tama, come out victorious on Castle Attack Night 1, this will only inflate their egos and prove their points that both Yoshi and Goto cannot dethrone G.O.D., And then at that point, G.O.D. will probably be looking for new challengers for their tag team titles because Bullet Club is the one that always makes demands. You as the competitor never make the demands to G.O.D. and or the Bullet Club. As we learned in the backstage comments when all three members, Tama Loa and Jay White, went after Ishii Goto and Yoshi. Very great backstage comments. If Yoshihashi and Goto manage to win their respective singles matches come night one, that's just going to set G.O.D. to be more angry and frustrated at the situation. And when comes night two, they better be on their A game because night two of Castle Attack, G.O.D., Tamatanga, and Tangaloa put up their IWGP heavyweight tag team championships against Yoshihashi and Godo. I'm confident that G.O.D. will retain their championships and hopefully we will get a rematch for the six men never open weight tag team championships with J.Y. with them. Together, all three men are seamless in the ring and they work really well with with Ishii, Godo and Yoshihashi. Aside from all that, you guys can definitely leave me your thoughts on social media, you can tag me at Marie underscore shadows to tell me who's going to win their respective matches. Is Loa going to get the victory over Yoshihashi or is Yoshi going to get the victory over Loa? And is Goto going to get the victory or is Tama going to get the victory? So if you're not following me on Twitter at Marie underscore shadows, let me know what you think. If you guys want to leave me a voice message on anchor.fm forward slash square circle podcast where I can play your thoughts on the next podcast episode. Just hit that voice message over on Anchor and just leave me a message. If you want to take it a step further, I have a community growing over at Substack. It is a newsletter. I have some wrestling articles on there. Go over and just sign up. Be easy, simple, theringcrew.substack.com. I will have a article up previewing these important matches and the stories behind them and if you guys enjoy what i do head over to the youtube side search up square circle podcast help me get to those 100 subscribers so i can tell you the url rather than just saying go look it up make sure to subscribe make sure to like leave some comments and this has been my analysis of the road to castle attack we have one more road to castle attack show on the 25th And then it's straight into the 27th and the 28th of Castle Attack. Until next time, guys, you have been listening to the Square Circle Podcast. I am your host, Marie Shadows, and I'll see you guys on the next one.